I'm going to scroll down and let's look at the alphanumeric validation. So now the point here is that for our username and password, we want to just allow users to input A to Z and 0 to 9 as the characters. We want to avoid any spaces, any odd characters, that kind of thing. So we're going to create our array of elements that we want to check. We're going to loop through each one of them. The first time this loops through, the input name will be username. We'll grab that post value here. We'll trim it again, just like we did in our previous validations. And then instead of using is numeric like we did for numeric validation, we're going to use a function called ctype alnum. And this is simply a PHP function that will check for exactly what we want, that the characters being used are A to Z, and they can be capitalized or underscored, and then 0 to 9. If it doesn't match that case, then we're going to add an error to the errors array that says, please enter only numbers or letters for, and then the name of the input. Our final validation is going to be to check to see if a username exists in the database that's identical to the one that the user input for their form. So in this case, there's only one input that we need to check. So the system that we used before, where we took an array of the inputs that we needed to validate, and then loop through each one of them, is unnecessary. So we're just going to start out by doing a MySQL query against the database to see if that username exists. So we're going to do that by using a select statement. So we begin with the select keyword, and then we're choosing a single column instead of all of the columns just to make this query a little bit more compact. The more columns that we return from a query, the more memory it will use, and potentially the more processing it will require on the query side. So we're just choosing a single column here to minimize that. It's not going to be a big deal here because we only have three users, but if we had a million users, then it would have an impact. And then we're going to say from, and then we're choosing from the people table, where, and then our only condition that we need to meet is that the username equals, and then we'll grab the username submitted through the form and run it through MySQL real escape string, again to prevent against SQL injection attacks. And then we're going to try to grab that row from the database. Now if there wasn't any, then that means that there's space to add this username and we're not going to add any errors. But if there is an existing row, and this will return true if it does, false if not, then we want to add an error. So the error we're going to add is, sorry it looks like that username is already in use. And then at the end of this validation, what we'll do is check to see how many errors there are, and if there's anything over zero, then we're going to render the error output. Again, we're using an implode function to pull it into a HTML list to display. And then we're going to add that to the list of notices using the notice function that we have. And then we're going to render the form again using the add form function. So now remember when we run this, what will happen is all of the data that the user input will get pulled back into that form again so they can make their adjustments and resubmit. If there are no errors, I'm just going to scroll down here, then we're going to insert the user. And this code is pretty much identical to our previous step. We go through each of the inputs, clean it up, and then generate our SQL query and run it. If it doesn't work, then we need to throw an error. If it does, we'll go ahead and add the notice the person was added.